Okay, it says to find the value of dy dt if dx dt is what? 2? Two? 2. And then x is, the, you know, a, b, or c. So how do we take this function and find, I'm going to write it like this. How do we find dy dt? The derivative of both sides. So dy dt equals, how do we take the derivative of the right side? Negative exponent of the inside, so negative 1 times the right side. Then times the negative 2. To the negative 2. Times dx dt. All right. Well, I'm not going to stand here and substitute x for you and dy dx dt. But you would put dx dt as two. And that's where we need dx dt. We need x here and here. Do negative two, zero, and two. Let's jump back and, and look at what those results are. we get 8 twenty fifths, and then when x is 0, we get dy dx is 0, yeah. and c, uh, when x is 2, negative 8 over 25. Is that surprising? No. Why not? Squares in the denominator, right? <coughs> Is it called a? Just like it's called. Like a what? Called a what? Uh, what? Hyperbola. Not a hyperbola. I don't even know if it has a name specifically. Uh, let's see. Calculator. Yep. On this first video, on the first video, there's a three in the numerator. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we see that uh, graph is just like a little bump right there. Uh, so what's going on? Let's see. Zoom. At negative, what was it, 2? Negative 2. What it's saying is there's this point um, that's moving along the graph. All right? And I'm just steady, I'm pressing the sideways arrow at a steady pace so that its horizontal speed is, is constant. So we, can, we can pretend, we can imagine that it's 2 centimeters per second. So here it's moving along. Now think about how fast it's moving just straight vertically. It's moving vertically faster now. It's not moving vertically at all. It's moving vertically fast, but down. And now it's vertical velocity. It's really slowing down, right? How fast it's moving straight vertical 
and slowing down the further to the right I get. Okay. It is moving at a, a positive dx dt. So it's moving along at two centimeters per second, or imagining two, two centimeters per second. It's moving vertically quick, really quick, and then stops, and then it speeds up. It's moving vertically quickly, and now its vertical velocity is slowing down. So that's why we see at negative two, it's moving up at 8 25th centimeters per second. When it gets to zero, it's at the very top of that, uh, of that little bump. It's not moving vertically at all. And when it gets past that now, the vertical velocity is a downward one, so it's negative. Twelve was a writing one. Yeah. What's it say? In your own words, yeah. state the guidelines for solving the latest yeah. rate problems. Okay. What would you say in your own words? If you were to write a tutorial for other students. To find an equation that relates what you do know something about to what you want to know something about. What's that? Well, time, time. When does time come into it? The derivative. Yeah. We take the derivative with respect to time, right? So, uh, relate. Uh, derivative. I'm going to write this really quick. With respect to time. Okay. Then, then what? Are you taking the derivative? So the change in what you know. So you know something about the change. So you're gonna plug in all the stuff you know, right? You're gonna plug in the stuff you know. is increasing at three centimeters per second. And I want to know like how fast is its area changing at, at such and such a time. Uh, at s equals five, how fast is it, the area changing? Well, I want to know something about the area. I know something about the side length. They're not really going to get related to each other until I'm looking at their rates at the derivative. Right? Related rates. I'm going to relate the rates. To relate the rates, we need something that we can find rates from, something to take the derivative of. So we relate, as Michael said, uh, something that we know to something that we want to know. I want to know the area, that's related to the side length, by this <coughs> equation. Okay, so now I take the derivative with respect to time. dA dt equals 2s ds dt. Well, now I just need to know the side length and the rate at which the side length is changing. I know both of those things. 2 times 5 times 3. So 30. 30 what? Centimeters squared. Centimeters squared. We got centimeters here. We got centimeters per second here. Centimeters squared per second. At that instant that this side length is 5, the area is increasing by 30 centimeters squared per second. Every second we're getting 30 centimeters squared. Um, next was 27. 16, 21, what is that? 23, 26, is this 27 down here? Yes. yes.
Which picture? Is it one of these pictures? It's the one on the left, yeah. Okay. Take the whole thing. Right, and then come over there, because I cannot read any of this. Okay, so we're doing the one on the left. Let's do the ladder. fast is the top of the ladder moving down the wall when its base is 7 feet, 15 feet, 25, 24 feet from the wall. Uh, it's moving away from the wall at 2 feet per second. So like, I don't know, maybe you got caught in a dog's collar or something and it's running along. It's pulling the ladder out from underneath you. Uh, we want to know how fast is the vertical <coughs> changing. Okay, so we have a, a vertical distance and a horizontal distance. This one is changing, naturally so is this one, because it's all part of a triangle with the, the rigid ladder as the hypotenuse. Okay, so I want to know something about this. I know something about this. I definitely know something about that. I could figure out some things about some angles, but those don't seem to be involved at all. They don't seem to be important. So can I relate these three things in some equation that I can then take the derivative of? Yes. Yeah. And in what way? Pythagorean <coughs> theorem. Let's call this x and this y. And this is just always 25. When something it cannot change, then you can just plug that in. But if it can change, only plug it in once you've taken the derivative. So y can change, so we'll leave it. x can change, so it'll be x squared plus y squared equals Squared. That might be a mistake. 25 squared. Just 625. X squared plus y squared equals 625. Well, what have they been telling me here? What What is 2 feet per second? What in the scenario is 2 feet per second? Gx dt. Very good. Gx dt is 2 feet per second. And it is away from the wall. So x is getting bigger, so it is positive. It is a positive 2 feet per second. Well, then I should probably take the derivative of this guy, right? So what's the derivative? Left to right. 2x two two plus 2y. Two 2x two two plus 2y. Two two x x x x x x <coughs> plus 2y dy dt equals. I guess that 25 squared didn't really matter, did it? Got 0 there. 2 times x. Uh, 7, 15, 24. Those are the three values we're going to plug in. Let's do 7 real quick. 7 times dx dt, which is 2, plus 2 times y. How do we figure out what y is? Plug it in. 7 there, solve for y. 625 minus 49 is whatever the square root is, 24. I can't believe you. Yeah, dy dt, 0. We solve for dy dt. Subtract. Uh, what do we have? Uh, 28 from both sides, divide by 48, 28 divided by 48. One half? <coughs> I don't think it's one half. 28 divided by 48? Subtract <coughs> 28. Negative. Oh, no, it's not one half. Yeah. 7 over 12? Negative. It is negative, though, that's important. Why is it negative? Why is dy dt negative? Because that y represents the vertical distance of the, the top of the ladder right there, how high that is off the ground. And it is getting smaller, so it is, it is negative. Part B. Uh, consider the triangle form, of course. For, for considering the triangle, how do we do the first part? Consider the triangle formed by the side of the house, the ladder, and the ground. Find the rate at which the area of the triangle is changing when the base of the ladder is 7. Now, this doesn't matter at all, does it? There's a really arbitrary area to find, right? Which area is between you and the ground and the house. But it's an exercise in relativity. Write an equation that relates what you know to what you want to know. What do you want to know about? 
area. Okay, so it's got to be something about area. And it's got to be related to this triangle, the side length specifically, not the angles. If we knew the angles and, and maybe a side length, we got like log, uh, let's see. You know, we've got different area formulas involving the sines and cosines of angles. We don't read that, do we? It's not, that is not something that's relevant to the problem. That's the point I'm making. Okay, so area equals? One half x y. Very good. So, take the derivative with respect to time. That's step number two we just laid out. One half times uh, x dy dt plus y dx dt. Right? Product rule. Product rule. Um, to, to define the rate at which the area is changing, the base of the ladder is seven feet from the wall. It's still it's the base is 7 feet from the wall. That's x. 7 times dy dt when it's 7 feet from the wall. What's dy dt when you're 7 feet from the wall? Negative 7 twelfths. Negative 7 twelfths. Negative 7 twelfths plus y. What is y? 24. We found that before. dx dt, that's 2. Multiply it all together. There you go. That's how fast the area is changing. Now it's asking about the angle. Find the rate at which the angle between the ladder and the wall, the house is changing, and the base of the ladder is 7 feet from the wall. So it does. The ladder, the ladder and the wall. Express this angle in terms of, say, this side and some, some other side. Sine, sine cosine. Sine, cosine. Sine of x over 25. The sine of theta is x over 25. Sine over 25. Yeah, x is 7. X is 7. Wait a minute. Is x changing? It changes. It changes. So don't plug it in until you allow it to change. What I mean by that is take the derivative. But this is always 25. So how is the angle changing? Well, we'll find out. What's the derivative of the sine of theta? Cosine of theta. Isn't that what we're looking for? What's the rate at which the angle is changing? That's better. Change the rule. We're taking the, we're taking the derivative with respect to t. So we got a comp composite function here. Sine is the outside, theta is the inside. Theta is the inside function. Cosine theta d theta dt equals 1 25th. say that this is 1 25th x. Oh. Right, just write it that way. Oh. Oh, yeah. 1 25th dx dt. Mm. You can use the quotient rule. Of course, it'll come out with like the same thing. Do I know the angle? No, no I don't. What do I know? <laughs> I know dx dt. What else do I know here? Oh, it's seven feet away from the wall. Can I figure out the angle of the seven feet away from the wall? Yes, the sine of theta equals x over 25. So we put seven there, take the inverse sine, and theta is? Times what? Yeah. Which is? Oh, um. Oh. Dx dt. Dx dt. Oh, 
2. That's the constant, 2. Uh, right. So we solve for the d theta dt. We take uh, 25 over, or 2 over 25. We divide it by whenever all of this is, the cosine of 16, whatever we like to say. Over 25 over the cosine of the inverse sine of 7 over 25. That comes out to I just, I'm glad we all got the text message that I only wanted to leave to be using this calculator today. Okay. No one else. I did all his math. I'm using my algebra class, so it's just some pretty simple math involved somewhere in there. From years back. Okay, so a man's six feet tall, he's six feet tall. Uh, walks at a rate of five feet per second away. So five feet per second away from a light post. How many of you are drawing this picture? Not right now, I mean in your homework. Were you drawing a picture? Drawing the picture in your mind, mistake number one. You gotta draw it on a piece of paper. Really important to draw a picture. Okay, so he's walking away. Uh, 15 feet above the ground, so this is 15. Sure you can read that. Um, when he is 10 feet from the base of the light, two questions. At what rate is the tip of the shadow moving? Okay. We all have played The Sims before. Well, yeah. No? Are we not? Diamond. No. That's a little uh, floating, bouncing, bouncing pointer thing, right? That's what we're doing. Just kind of follow. It just follows it around. Just imagine a bouncing, pointing arrow above my head. Okay. I guess in The Sims it is a diamond. Uh, 
Uh, so it's, it's just bouncing and pointing at the tip of the shadow wherever the tip of the shadow is. Okay. So he's moving away from the, the, uh, the light. And so his, the tip of a shadow is moving. You can imagine this marker moving along with it. Okay. So I want to know at what rate is the tip of the shadow moving? So what they're really asking is like, if this thing is following the tip of the shadow, how fast is this thing moving? And then also, at what rate is the length of the shadow changing? Is the shadow getting bigger or smaller? It's getting bigger. So we're gonna know two things. Now, we've got this guy right here. We call it L. The length of the shadow. Here's all this stuff that we know. Like, five feet per second. What distance is changing at five feet per second? His distance from the light post. Actually, his his distance from any fixed point behind him. But uh, it would be most useful to use the light post because then we can just call it this distance right here, like x. But he's moving. It's changing, right? Don't want to plug that in, so we take the derivative. That will mess you up big time. Because that part of the when you take the derivative, that part will just be zero. It won't like it won't be allowed to change. It won't be able to have its dt. You know. Okay. Um, so we want to know about how fast this is moving. So that means we want to know what about what distance do we want to know something about? The tip of the shadow, where the tip of the shadow is, from the light. Want to know that length of the triangle plus L? The x plus L. We want to know this entire length of that big triangle, and of course, recognize that this triangle is going to be pretty useful. We want to know something about x plus L. Can we relate x plus L to some other stuff? Given that we have a big triangle, do you see any other triangles? Little one, do you notice anything about those two triangles? Similar. You know anything about similar triangles? They're proportional to each other. Can we throw x plus l into some equation? Yes. Like? 2x plus 2l. What about that? In similar triangles, it's more like. Okay. I call this uh, big A. B, no, this is, should be B, that should be C. And uh, little a, little b, and little c. So when we say two similar triangles or similar uh, objects, two objects are similar, they're proportional to each other, something like a over a equals c over c, b over b. Or another way to look at it would be like little a over little b equals big a over, big a over little b. b. There you go. That's what, that's how we're doing. 15 over 6. 15 over 6. That'd be the, the short leg of this one and the short leg of this one. Equal to, yeah. X over L. X plus L. Well, X plus L over L. That's something we can work with. What do we want to know? D what, DT? x plus l dt. Yeah, that's kind of funny. But let's get these guys out of the denominator so you don't cross multiply and such. 15l equals 6x plus l. Right? Do we have to call x plus l x plus l? If that, we want to know that rate of change, can we just call that something? Y? Right, just give it a singular name, because we want to know how fast that, that whole distance is changing. So we can take the derivative. Except for what did we do? Oh, we took out x. That was something we knew something about. So we should do that.
minus L. Or, or um, Y minus X. L would be Y minus X, now we have X is back. Yeah. That's pretty oh, clever. No, that's not how you do it. There you go. So we call this Y, we call this Y minus X. So we want to know about the y dt and we know something about the x dt. You see what Tori did there? Clever. You might, sometimes we need to do that and we need to rewrite our equation so that it only involves the things we want to know and the things we don't want to know. Or the, the things that we want to know and the things that we do know something about already. If we involve L, we don't know anything about L. That makes things difficult. Okay. So 15y minus 15x equals 6y. Take the derivative of both sides, go. 15 minus T, you do T. I don't know about dy dt. I can uh, collect dy dt's on one side. We can get um, 15, so 9 dy dt. equals 15 dx dt. Divide by 9 on both sides. So dy dt equals 5. So dx dy dt equals, what did you say? 3, 5, 3. 5 thirds. 5 thirds. dx dt. I want you to think about that. I wonder if it's surprising to you. Um, I mean, let's say we wanted to find dy dt. What do we need to know? Dx dt. What's dx dt? Five. Five. Five feet per second. So 25 thirds. What did we not need to know? How far it is. It didn't matter that he was 10 feet away. It wound up being irrelevant. It was like a, an extra piece of information. That extraneous information they would give you in elementary school word problems? Is that, so that a thing is. still when you yeah. guys were in elementary? Yeah. They tell you the color of the sheep and the. I was actually listening to a, a podcast about math education and uh, students get so used to, oh, so we're doing long division now, so whatever numbers are in this problem, I'll long divide them. But they did a little test and they. They, they asked a question. It had a lot of information. They gave you like the the number of people on a boat and the number of sheep on the boat and the color of things and all that kind of stuff. And the question was just how old is the captain, which was something that was given. But what they did was they were whatever they were doing at the time, they just tried to do that with the numbers in the problem. They tried to divide the number of sheep by the number of people. So they weren't paying attention to the question, they weren't thinking about the math. They just took the numbers and divided them. Right. It doesn't matter how far away he is, at any time, or at anywhere that he is, his shadow will be moving at five thirds the rate that he's moving. Because that triangle apparently is five thirds the size of, uh, I guess, of the distance that he, that he is away from the Okay. Um, this is something you'd want to know if you first arrive in Narnia. Then you just start writing. Mm -hmm. And you have a shadow. That one close is not that far. Uh, at what rate is the length of the shadow changing now? What distance do we want to know about its rate of change? Well, L. L. Okay. Well, now we know dy dt. We know dy dt is actually a constant all the time. So we're going to rewrite another equation that involves L. We already did write an equation that involves L and x, didn't we? We could just rewrite that one. 
uh, 15 over 6 equals, um, what do we have, x plus l over l. Oh, but it doesn't involve y. It doesn't involve y, so it's not going to involve dy dt. It's got to involve l and y. Can we involve l and y? L minus x equals y. L plus x. L plus x equals y. Okay. You can have y over l. Y over l. Okay, so y over l. That's the big distance over the small distance. The the, the large large leg over the small large leg. Equals what? 15 over 6? Yeah, sure. So 15 L equals 6 Y. So 15 DL DT equals 60 Y DT. And so the L DT three fifths three fifths DY DT. I mean two fifths, not that. Two fifths DY DT. DYDT we know is 25 over 3. Plug that in there. So 10 thirds. 10 thirds. There we go. All right. Uh, number 8. Packets. 8 was the second part. Goodness. Can I just bar out your packets? Okay, so there's this graph, x squared plus 1, that's a parabola that's a y-intercept of 1. Eight, uh, page 548, the first packet I gave you. Uh, so the x coordinate is increasing at a constant rate of three halves units per second. Okay, so here's this point, and it's horizontally always moving at three halves units per second. Units per second. The rate in units per second at which the distance from the origin is changing when the point has coordinate one two is question mark. What's the distance to the origin? Y value. That's the distance to the x axis. Let's shoot a dotted line from the origin to the dot. That's the distance we're looking for. If we call that distance d, we're looking for d, 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 t. Well, that makes a triangle. That's a right triangle. Do we know something about and the x value at some point? Yeah. It's one. one. You know the y value? Two. Two. You know something about how fast x is changing? Yeah. We do. So we should probably write some, some kind of relationship between x and y in this distance. What? The Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus. What's y? How do we find y? Plug x into the original equation. What's the original equation? X squared plus one. X squared plus one. That's y squared equals d squared. What are we going to do now? Find the derivative with respect to t. Go.
know this is one, right? That's one, this is one, this is one. Yes. Three halves. So three halves, it goes there, it goes there. But could factor those out. Uh, to find dd dt, that's the rate of change of the, the distance to the origin. You're gonna have to subtract 2d from both sides, right? So it's just that. Uh, Oh, it is multiplied. You're right. So divide this whole side by 2d. Can you find d? Yeah. Because this point is at 1, 2, 1 squared plus 2 squared equals d squared. 1 plus 4 plus d squared. So d equals the square root of 5. Square root. So we've got the two times one times three halves. Actually, that's just going to be three. Two times one times three halves, that's just going to be three. Plus two times two times two times three halves. Or sorry, two times, yeah, two times three halves. Let's see, two times three halves, that's just three. So three times four. Three times four, 12 over two root five. Uh, 15 over 2 root 5. Yeah. Um, so I don't see that answer, so what did they probably do to get their input in? Five root five, so we get fifteen root five over two times five. That's ten. It cancels. That's three. That's two. Three root five over two. A particle moves on a line according to the law S equals F of T, a line, not a curve. Okay. S equals F of T. So that its velocity V equals KS, where K is an under constant, its acceleration is. Its velocity. KS. Yeah, we take the derivative of this. What's the derivative of this? K is a constant. Yeah. Just, I mean, it's just K. K. I guess K. 
was with the respect to with respect to time. So it would be like K Let's, uh, let's, let's pack up the book work, you know, and, and get ready to pass it in. And uh, do the review, and then I will give you a better explanation of that one. Okay. Hopefully, this is what we call the V simple norm. The circle's radius is decreasing at a rate of two centimeters per second. Uh, how fast is the circle circumference changing when the radius is twelve centimeters per second? So, what does this mean? It's a change in the radius. Change in the radius. What is the change in the radius? Of the it's getting smaller, right? So it's going back, it's shrinking, it's taking away from two centimeters per second. So it's all in the wording. CDC, we need to do what? The CDC equals uh, 2 pi DRDC. Because yeah. 2 pi is just a number. So DCDT, just plug in negative 2, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. 2 pi, negative 2, negative 4 pi. Negative 4 pi, what? Centimeters. Centimeters. Centimeter, no, you're right, centimeter, that's square. Just centimeters, because we have, this is centimeters per second, and that's just 2 pi. This one, this one makes reference to surface area, volume, all that stuff. We probably want to know the equations for volume and circumference, or for uh, surface area, right? You guys remember those? Volume equals? 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Got it. Surface area, that's not C, that's, that's kind of like a 3D C. Uh, surface area.
test? You don't even have a sheet full of formulas. You don't have to know these formulas. Yeah. Um, so, let's see, a spherical balloon is being inflated so that its surface. I changed my mind. That's what happened. I changed my mind from surface area to volume. Let's change it to volume, and we'll just make this a good project. Okay. So the volume is increasing at three inches cubed per second. How fast is the surface area changing when the radius is five inches? Just for for good measure, let's just take the derivative of both of these functions. Right? They're probably going to be like these are probably going to be useful, and their derivatives are probably going to be useful. So let's just list them all. We get dv dt equals what? Four pi r squared. Does that say? Three. Wait. Four pi r squared. Yeah. Dr. Dr. Dt. Yep. Just a little bit more. D a d t. So there's all that stuff in there. Let's see. Its volume is increasing at three inches cubed per second. So we know dv dt. Okay. How fast is the surface area changing when the radius is five inches? The radius is five inches. We know the radius. Okay. So, well, then we can find dr dt. What's that? We can find dr dt there. Yeah, we can find dr dt in that equation. We've got uh, three equals four pi times 5 squared um, and dr dt 3 equals 400 pi. So 300 equals dr dt. Right. What about pi? What's that? Oh, what did I do with pi? I don't know. Oh, okay. I we canceled that. We go 400 pi. Um, okay, but it's asking how fast is the surface area changing? Well, now we know the RDT. We can play that guy. The ADT is 8 pi times 5 times uh, 3 over 100 pi. Whatever that number is, that's it. That is how fast the area is changing. So the pi is the that's nice, isn't it? Um, 5, 120 over 100, so 12 tens. 6 fifths. 12 tens. 45. 6 fifths? Everybody agree 6 fifths? 6 fifths what? Pi. Well, the pi is canceled. Yeah. What's the units? Um, inches per second. Inches per second? Square. Square. Square, yeah. Four out of five, just do number one. Because that second one is really confusing me. top box you guys are making. If you're done, great. If you're not, then let's just talk about the box while you keep working. Okay. So this used to be a piece of paper, right? Uh, a little for illustration, like this side may have started life as this flap right here, right? Yes? Yeah. 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 All right? Yeah. Is that wrong? 
Well, this guy here turned into that. Uh, this guy here that turned into this side, and you get it. So if I cut out an x size square out of this piece of paper, then how tall is this box? It's x. And we know how big the piece of paper was to start with. Hopefully, it was 8 and a half by 11. Standard piece of paper in America. I don't want to give too much away about it. I want you to think a little bit about it for your homework. Okay. Um, so that would be x. I just want you to realize how it's folding up and how this dimension becomes this dimension. And obviously this takes some of this dimension away to make this length here. Okay. So what I want you to do, think about the volume of this box. Think about um, the volume of the box as a, as, a, as a function, v of x, x being the side length of the square. Okay, that's all that first part says. I'm going to draw a sketch of the graph of v of x. Okay, so let's get started on that. Just draw a sketch, a guess. Okay, now, as a help, think about V of zero, what does V of zero mean? What's zero mean? Side length. Side length of zero means I haven't cut anything out of the box. Then, without just shouting things out, I want you to think about this for a few minutes and, and sketch out this graph best you can. Think about V of 4.25. Think about, think, huh? blurt out, think about what that would mean. And then V of 5.5, think about what that would mean. Think about the volumes you would get for those side lengths. Okay. So, let's give it some thought. Remember, this axis would give us the volume, and this axis would just give us the side length of the square we cut out of the box. So, you could write it on, you can draw this graph on your box. Yeah, you can draw this graph on your box if you want to. You can draw it on your notes. Here's zero, here's x is zero, here's x is say uh, four and a half, or four, sorry, 4.25 and five and a half. Well at zero, what kind of volume do you have when you don't cut any square out? Zero. Zero, zero volume. What's interesting about 4.25? We cut out a 4.25, that's half of the eight and a half. So those two squares would meet each other. Right? Yeah. And so there'd be like no flap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There'd be no flap from the top. So what volume would that box have? Zero. Also zero. What about five and a half? What's five and a half? Half of the length. Half of the long side. That would be 11. So that would also have a volume of zero. Okay. Now all this stuff is kind of nonsense. So you're going to get negative volumes there. But what do you get in between? A zero volume and a zero volume when you cut out squares like you cut out. Positive volumes, positive volumes. Somewhere up here, and then coming back down, obviously it has to come back down towards that zero volume. Here we'd get negative volumes, which don't make a lot of sense. Okay. Do you think there's a maximum volume, like a best size square to cut out? Yep. Yeah. That's what we're gonna try and figure out. It's gonna be right there in the middle. I want you to do number two for homework. Write the equation for the V of X. 